Hi, my name is Nick Osborne, aka The Coffee Detective, and today we're going to have a quick look at the kind of the principal coffee makers, types of coffee maker. Um, as you can see, it's already crammed here, <laughs> but I could put a lot more different types here. But these, these represent really the, the, the basics. So first we're going to have a look at the, the easy, inexpensive end, you know, like a, like a French press. This is a small one. You can get them much bigger. Um, you know, you simply put the coffee grinds in there. You pour the water in there, push this down, it separates, filters out the grounds from the coffee, and you got a cup of coffee. I mean, very simple, very inexpensive. Uh, you can pick out one of these for, well, let's say 20 bucks. You can, you can get them less expensive and more expensive than that. So let me put that aside. That's a kind of hands-on way of making coffee. Here's another one. Uh, this is simply the, the uh, filter cone or, or dripper. Um, you, put a, you put a filter in here, you put your coffee in there, put it over your glass, um, and then just pour hot water over the coffee grinds. It goes through the filter into the cup or into a carafe if you have a larger setup. I mean, you can get started. <laughs> this is a Hario uh, dripper. It's a little more expensive. Uh, when I say that, it's like 12 bucks instead of, I mean, you can pick up something like this from Walmart for like for three bucks. Um, actually a very very good way to make a cup of coffee it's it's hands-on it takes little time it takes little practice to get it right um, but you'll make as good a cup of coffee as with anything else simply with this little three or four dollar doodad there um, this is the Chemex brewer it's it's similar uh, to the filter cone insofar as you you put a filter in the top here a paper filter you put your coffee grinds in um, and then you pour the kettle, you pour the hot water over the coffee grinds. Uh, much more attractive um, piece of equipment. Very, very simple, very attractive. I like it a lot. Um, again, it takes some practice. You have, to, you have to get the timing right. You have to get the grind of the coffee right. Um, you have to make sure that you get all of your grinds evenly soaked so you get even extraction. You have to get, you have to make sure that the you know, you can get a, get a timer going to make sure that the water and the coffee is in contact for just the right amount of time. So it's a kind of hands-on thing. It takes little learning, um, but it's a lot of fun. I mean, a, a, a Chemex is a little bit more expensive, uh, but wildly popular with the kind of hands-on craft copy making crowd. So that's that. And I can't remember what this is, but it's, hey, let's say 50 bucks. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of glass. Now we get on to, from there, we'll go to the drip brewer, which uh, most of us have in our homes, a drip brewer. This is a, a Bonavita drip brewer. It doesn't have the glass carafe on a heat plate, which you can get uh, with this brewer, but I have the thermal carafe, um, and for a very good reason. If you, if you keep heating the coffee from the bottom, you're evaporating the water, you start getting a bitterness in the coffee. I mean, I'm sure we've all experienced that in, in office coffee. Uh, this is not wildly expensive. It's, uh, I can't remember exactly, $120, $130. Uh, it's a very unimposing thing. It just has an on-off. There are no little timers, no trickery here. Um, but in fact, it probably makes coffee as good as any you will get anywhere. Um, I mean, I know some people who own large coffee companies who are totally obsessed about quality. Um, and I said to one of them, George Howell, I said, uh, hey, how come you don't use something like a Chemex, some kind of hands-on pour-over method? And he said, well, why would I bother when the Bonavita does just as good a job? So uh, that is my drip brewer of choice. Uh, less expensive than some of the fancy ones. Uh, fabulous cup of coffee every time. Now we can get into the, the kind of modern... This is a K-cup brewer. It's not a Keurig brewer. This is, in fact, an, an iCoffee Opus brewer, but it's the same deal. Uh, you know, you grab a K-cup, you put it in the top there, close it up, press the button, um, and it makes you one cup of coffee. Uh, probably about 25% people in North America now have a, a K-cup brewer uh, or a single serve brewer of some kind because there are other systems, there's the, the Tassimo, uh, the Nespresso and, and others as well. Uh, these, are, these are massively popular simply because the, it makes making coffee so convenient. Um, you know, there's, there's no mess, there's no filters, there's no wet coffee. Uh, this comes out dry, you just take it out and you throw it away. 
Um, therein lies one of the problems with this system. Billions of these K-cups are thrown away every single year. Um, and it's a little bit of a problem out there in the, in the, in the landfills. Uh, massive amounts of plastic being thrown away. But they're, but they're very popular uh, simply because it makes making coffee so easy. And also, I mean, there are simple things like uh, th these are very, uh, these are very uh, popular in offices and I guess in homes where, where not everyone wants the same kind of coffee. Uh, somebody may like, the, what have we got here? We've got a Marley Coffee Buffalo Soldier. That may be my favorite. Uh, maybe my wife wants a vanilla shake or hazel, a vanilla flavored or hazelnut flavored coffee um, in the morning. Well, we don't have to make two pots. Uh, I just use my K-cup and then she grabs her K-cup out of the hazelnut flavored box and we can have separate coffees. Um, now, um, what do I do? I actually start off with that in the morning, make a pot of coffee um, and, and that's what we drink until oh, I don't know, middle of the morning I and mean, that's sometimes all that we drink. Um, if I want an extra cup of coffee late in the morning or early afternoon, um, I don't make a whole new carafe with that. I just grab one K-cup. In fact, most of the time what I actually do, uh, there's, a, there's a reusable filter that comes with this. Uh, I only have this K-cup because somebody sent them to me. Uh, what I usually do is there's a reusable filter you can put in there. So I just, the loose coffee that I have for brewing this each morning, I just put some of that in the reusable filter, put it in here, and I can make one cup of coffee at a time and I'm, and I'm not throwing anything away. So the, the, those are basically the, the three ways you can go. There's the hands-on approach, whether it's a French press or a pour-over approach. Uh, there's the traditional drip brewer, and then there's the single serve brewer. And what, what I'm looking at here is basically making straight coffees. Um, another time I can have a look at the machines you'd want if you actually want to make something, uh, you know, an espresso based drink like a cappuccino or a latte or something like that. So th these, are, these are all just systems for making coffee. As for which is best for you, um, hey, it really depends. It really depends. If you only have one cup of coffee a day, uh, then something like this, and then, if, you know, if you want, you can use the reusable filter or buy the K-cups. If you only have one or two cups of coffee a day, th this, this is really good. Uh, if you want a carafe of coffee a day, I'd go for that. And I'm a big fan of the Bonavita um, brand and, and, and their brewers. If you really want to get into gourmet coffee and really want to be hands-on about it, uh, then go for one, you know, go for the French press or go for one of those pour over systems because you have complete control then and you can make minor adjustments um, and, and really get into it and enjoy the different flavors and potentials of different coffees. Okay, so that's it. That's a very quick overview of the different ways um, uh, you can make coffee and I hope that helps you figure out which is the best coffee maker for you. Thank you.